Hello friends, how are you? So in continuation to my wetland birds vlog, which I started with Purvastali, uh, here is my new vlog on Manglajuri, which is yet another bigger wetland, and it is home to a lot of migratory species from all across the globe. So today I will show you something which I witnessed and which was magical from the land of Manglajuri. Let me tell you something about the history. Manglajuri is a small picturesque village on Chilka Lake's northwestern fringe known for its marshes and waterfowl congregations. Every winter, Manglajuri comes alive with birds from temperate regions that migrate here to spend winter in the warm waters. Ducks like Pintel, Shovelers, Gargane, Gadwal and Poachards and many weathers such as black-tailed godwits, black-winged stilts, ring plovers undertake a perilous journey from as far as Europe, Central Asia, etc. across the Himalayas and congregate here to feed in the rich wetlands and prepare themselves for their return migration in the summer. It was a road trip we took from Kolkata to Bhuvaneshwar for some urgent work of my fellow traveller Shayan and once we finished the work the day after we headed to Manglajuri to have a one two hour suffer. And right after getting into the boat, we were greeted by the black wing stilt. It's a very widely distributed long-lived wader in the avocate and stilt family. Then it was time for the black-tailed godwits. The black-tailed godwit is a large, long-legged, long-billed shorebird first described by Curl Linnaeus in 1758. It is a member of the godwit genus. There are four subspecies, all with orange head, neck and chest in breeding plumage and dull grey brown winter coloration and district black and white wing burr at all the times. Its breeding range stretches from Iceland through Europe and areas of Central Asia. Black-tailed godwits spend winter in the areas as diverse as the Indian subcontinent, Australia, New Zealand, Western Europe and West Africa. This species breeds in fence large edges, damp meadows, moorlands and bogs. It's a very widely distributed long-lived wader in the avocate and stilt family. And then came the glossy ibis. They are water birds in the order of pelicaniforms and the ibis and spawnbill family. The scientific name is derived from the ancient Greek Pelagius and Latin Falcus, both meaning sickle and referring to the distinctive shape. The sun was setting fast and we ended the two hour long safari watching the beautiful sun call it a day off and we started preparing ourselves for a brand new day tomorrow. Welcome to day 2. Day 2 was even fascinating for me because I had a lot of lifers. I have never seen, there were a lot of birds which I saw from so close proximity which I have never seen and it started like that with the black headed girl. The black headed girl is a small girl that breeds in much of the Palearctic including Europe and also in coastal eastern Canada. Most of the population is migratory and winters further south, but some birds reside in the milder westernmost areas of Europe. The black-headed girl displays a variety of compelling behaviors and adaptations. Some of this time it was the grey heron. 
The grey heron is a long-legged wading bird of the heron family, native throughout temperate Europe and Asia, and also parts of Africa. It was a dream come true for me because as the time passed on, I was greeted with newer and newer lifers. This time it were the grey lag goose and the lifo for me. This is a species of large goose in the waterfowl family and the type species of the genus Anser. It is mottled and bird, grey and white plumage and an orange beak and pink legs. A large bird, it measures between 74 and 91 centimeters in length with an average weight of 3.3 kilograms. Oh my god, what was happening? Another lifer, the pintail or northern pintail. It is a duck species with wide geographic distribution that breeds in the northern areas of Europe and North America. Oh, another lifer, the ruddy shell duck. It is also called as the Brahmini duck. The ruddy shell duck mostly inhabits inland water bodies such as lakes, reservoirs, and rivers. The male, the breeding ruddy shell ducks, mainly have a brighter color, a brightish brown, a golden tinge, which comes in this. This particular goose was lacking this. That means it is not in its breeding plumage. The purple heron. I think this bird is very common around lakes and water bodies near your residences. So this particular bird was in search of snakes and our boatman and guide insisted us to stay for some time and watch its movement in case it catches a snake. And the black-headed iris, also called as the oriental white iris and black-necked iris, is a species of wedding birds of the ibis family. They breed around South and Southeast Asia from India to the West and as far as parts of Japan. It is the only native ibis species in its range that has an overall white plumage with a back neck and head. The down curved beak and legs are also black. This is something which I have never experienced in my life and was the highlight of the trip. Around 50 turns, whisker turns were waving around and hovering around us in search of fish. Slowly they were joined by the black-headed girls as if they were in for a feast or some kind of dinner, team dinner. There was a lot of fight going on around. Slowly we saw that the egrets also joined in this beautiful thing.
So viewers, I hope I could give you a glimpse of this wonderful wetland which still remains untouched by the human encroachment and all other external factors which contribute to destruction of the habitats of birds and animals. Hope we try to keep it clean in the future. Please like and share this video as much as you can and to see such good work again in the future, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you from the Big Cat Lover.